good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. And tonight I want to speak to you about the debate between Paul Krugman and Ron Paul. Last night, as soon as it came out, I made a piece quickly. It wasn't to the quality uh, that I'm satisfied with. And tonight I'm not going to repeat anything I said in last night's presentation but I have a more carefully crafted analysis of this debate. Uh, tonight's piece is entitled, The Problem with Krugman's Argument. My step-grandfather worked for the Federal Reserve. He was a conservative economist. His name is Paul Simpson. Look him up. He told me, and we agreed back about 10 years ago, that concentration of wealth was the greatest threat to America. Now, power and money are exchangeable. Watch Obama's net worth go from less than $1 million prior to his uh, Senate election, certainly, to over $100 million through the corruption as, of fame, as did Clinton. Those they benefited will pay fees to have them speak and fet them with favors. Uh, quid pro quo. <clears throat> um, those they, uh, people will pay for their attention in hopes of connection. Of course, the old money Republicans, such as Bush, start filthy rich and end filthy, filthy rich. In the case of Romney, he started rich and is ending filthy, filthy rich, certainly. Krugman talks about unemployment. Economists tell other men what to do with their money. But they do not look at whether activity is desirable. That is not something they've learned how to measure. They call it pursuing your utilities. In other words, going to the whorehouse or being a professor have the same effect to an economist, by and large, because you're pursuing your interests. It's not up to them to judge whether they uh, have any relative merit. Uh, in my view, there's an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. You have from productive to non productive. Or, uh, yeah, that's good enough for the moment. And you have functional to non-functional. We want all activity to be productively engaged by people who enjoy doing it, who are pursuing their dream, and are functional. They weren't beaten as children in poverty-stricken meth homes with schools rotting apart. They live with dignity. Their parents weren't constantly pressured to put out more and more and make do with less and less. That's my view of the middle class and the poor in America. Having 10 pairs of shoes made per person does not actually create wealth. It probably destroys wealth as at this point in our technology, because ultimately infinite consumption may be possible with a more advanced technology. But at this point, it's destroying wealth because it merely exhausts the earth groaning under our consumption-based economics because we don't have time to do anything but consume. If Krugman were really so smart, forgive me for putting it in such a childish way, he would look at these things and see what we want is to eliminate drudge work and pursue each of us our dreams. We have been taught that your work must lead to wealth, praise, notoriety, fame, to be of value. Of course, things that others value are a lot easier to feel good about than things you enjoy doing and making only for yourself. But if you whittled, which is to carve in wood, a sloop, which is a type of little boat, and give it to a boy, does that not give you more satisfaction than to sell it on eBay for $100? What I'm talking about could come about in our lives or it may take a thousand years, or it may never happen. It's up to us. But the things that make these visions, and this is not my utopia, people all over the world are talking about these things. And it is not communism, because what I agree with Ron Paul about, and what he has taught me, is that attraction is much better than compulsion, and better even than promotion. A society seeking to eliminate compulsion and force. This is where interdisciplinary studies come in. This idea of trying to figure out which economic output has the greatest benefit. So you analyze people's health, their sanity, 
uh, and so forth. And to do that, you need perhaps psychology, sociology, medicine, and various other disciplines integrated with economics. And this is what they call, if I'm not mistaken, normative economics. But this is uh, still a field that is looked at somewhat dubiously by people like Krugman, if I'm not mistaken. We can thank the king of Bhutan, actually, for the National Happiness Index. Krugman does not analyze the utility of a particular form of economic activity. We do not need jobs. We need resources. We need access to clean food, a healthy environment, a low-stress life, sunlight, clean water, rest, and the ability to educate ourselves and to equip ourselves, not to consume, but to really live. All these things could be had by all if we focused on eliminating unnecessary activity and reduced activity to focus on productive activity. Now you may say, how does Ron Paul come in? If you'll wait just a moment, you'll see. And then we can build things we feel connected to. If you want to call it ownership, fine. But if you've ever been to a barn raising, the point is not that you own the barn. It is that you now have stronger friendships and your community is rich and it's satisfying. What I have found is that if you had seven co-ops or credit unions uh, or owner-operated enterprises, you could have all the things that are needful in your life. Paul did well enough, Ron Paul, but he was not at his best. The man must be under tremendous pressure and exhausted. We all have good days and bad days. And to face Krugman, who has spent his entire life delving into economics full time, when Ron Paul, as much as he studied it, uh, it's like going against an Olympic athlete, uh, except you're, in my view, your uh, direction for the world is a much better direction than the Olympic athlete. He's simply technically more proficient. <clears throat> and again, I think you need more than one of these discussions to be able to assess whether Paul can actually defeat Krugman intellectually. But it's not about defeat, and Ron Paul is excellent at this. It's about wooing, it's about attraction. We don't have to defeat Paul Krugman. We need to have him begin to see these ideas in a new light. And Krugman responded to Paul when he talked about how he wanted to bring America back to his own parents. He didn't get a chance to finish that thought. <clears throat> Eliminate jobs, but create wealth. Our economy is driven on a fluff. Our main industries were called fire, finance, insurance, real estate, and uh, if I, if I, and, uh, real estate, right. And none of these actually create wealth. Real estate helps you locate a property and navigate the rules about acquisition of it. Uh, uh, finance uh, tells you to some extent what other people think about your business plan. Um, and insurance tells you how risky some activity that you're involved in uh, is. However, we are compelled to buy these things and we don't really need them in the types of quantities that we're talking about. So what I did is I went through the entire U.S. statistical abstract, which shows every job in the country. I figured out the ratio of nurses to people. And then you construct, like, uh, uh, put it in a box, make it into a pie, however you like. And I found that we only need 25% of these jobs to provide all that is needful. We need, okay. The other th uh, areas that are growing are prisons and war, bureaucracy, and national security. Go through the U.S. statistical abstract. Do the study, uh, the work. Study new ways of doing things, such as Israeli tomato hydroponics. Back when I was doing it, to produce a great deal of tomatoes per acre, or uh, the ability for a single man with the right machinery to process, to to harvest and maintain maybe a thousand acres of land which is enough to feed maybe 10,000 people. You can look at all sorts of ways to try to eliminate work instead of increasing it. In my view we need equity in the things that are needful to us. 
through voluntary opt-in structures, which will replace government. We eliminate taxation. We don't have policemen laying in wait for us everywhere to write tickets for us to pull us over. Um, we might have community helpers who uh, would fix your tail light if it was really that hazardous. Um, but why do we pay for people to harass us, except because we become intolerant of the way other people live? The higher aspirations of the individual, which I've divided uh, as follows, craftsmanship and art, to, for example, rebuild a strip mall into a work of architectural beauty with stained glass, tile floors, services, music, drama, to construct beautiful swimming pools, performance centers, rapid transit systems, bike paths. You know Americans don't walk. People in Europe do. That's why we're much fatter than they are, along with our corporate corn syrup-based diet for the poor. You pay more to eat healthily, quickly, than unhealthily. To research scientifically, to engineer. The Soviet Union and the East Bloc did many of these things, but they did it using force and many people died and were imprisoned, were put in mental hospitals uh, for being political dissidents. It was too heavy a price. Most people would rather have some degree of freedom, which we still have. We can still speak publicly, our minds, however it's been chilled, uh, than great universities uh, where people have difficulty expressing themselves. But I have met Eastern Europeans, a minority for sure, that really appreciated what they had in a few places, such as Czechoslovakia and Yugoslavia. Socialism uses force. Cooperativism, if you will, is voluntary. We can take care of ourselves without very much government, but we must build such institutions. Ron Paul has not articulated a perfect vision. What he has articulated is a framework where people are not under compulsion, a framework that allows conservatives and liberals and leftists to each make their own decision as they see fit about how they want to live. We make things cheaper than people, uh, we make things cheaper than people can afford them, rather than um, uh, making a, a higher margin, because we're providing them for ourselves. Private businesses will then have to compete with these community enterprises, which in the past might not have been as efficient because they were small scale. There might be ways of leveraging international knowledge to help with these things. Computers mean that the inefficiencies of small business can be overcome. Software, the cloud. Because the customer is the owner. There are many variations on this theme. In other words, ecotopia can thrive in a small government framework. Why have I not talked more of Ron Paul's specifics about economics? Because what I seek to do is show why I support Ron Paul, why my interests are best borne out through Paulism rather than Robomneyism. What has Obama done for you? He killed, this is a bit of my own personal issue, he killed the founder of a, of a state the state of Libya, uh, which is Muammar Gaddafi, who threw off the shackles of colonialism and led the country to and became a dictator like Fidel Castro, although you know this is a somewhat of a, a brief uh, value judgment. We also have liquidated his leading ministers and took a well-educated police state and turned it into a chaotic land exporting Islamic extremism and aligning with Al-Qaeda. You can find plenty of these stories. Just Google Al-Qaeda in Libya. My site shows the Al-Qaeda flag flying over the place where the protests broke out in Benghazi on, if I'm not mistaken, February 17th. I hope the elections in Libya go well next month. I do not wish any Libyan ill. But what we did was not because we cared about the Libyans. And don't tell me it was Europe who did it. They couldn't have done it without us. They couldn't have done it without Hillary Clinton, Susan Rice, and Barack Obama. They don't know yet how to invade and plunder the way we do. Obama's busting pot clinics, forcing people to buy pot from criminals instead of licensed regulated outlets against his own campaign promises. He failed to support decriminalization in Mexico, guaranteeing more bloodshed, more beheadings of children. If you bring a business out of the dark and into the light, violence goes down. Al Capone is what you get under prohibition, uh, and what you get now with a legal alcohol trade uh, is much preferable. 
he has accelerated the use of drones all over the world, which is a sinister, dark form of warfare that is terrifying if you're on the receiving side. He's part of an evil system, and you can tell by his face, if you ask me, that he's not under duress, that he enjoys it. Absolute power must feel pretty good. It must feel pretty good to be king, but it corrupts absolutely. There is evidence that power drives people mad to view everyone under them as there to serve them or adulate them. He passed the Patriot Act. He passed the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, which allows us 